Hello, hope you're having a nice day. Today I'd like to talk about Nacoduct, how they work and how to use them on your car. So, a quick history lesson. Nacoduct is the official name of these sort of triangular intake things. They're named after NACA, or National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, basically the precursor to NASA. Uh, they were created in a period during which there was a lot of research going on for different aerodynamic devices for planes, and one of the things they looked into were sunken intakes. You've probably seen this shape on a few sports cars and racing cars. Uh, first things that spring to mind are, for example, on the front of the Ferrari F40 or on the roof of the Bugatti Veyron Supersport. Nacoducts work better than other intakes that sink into the body because of its unique shape. This uh, sort of low sloped angle and the way that these walls of the intake move apart and the fact that they're at a 90 degree angle to the slope means that a vortex is produced along the edges of the wall which rotates inwards into the intake and helps essentially suck air downwards versus a normal sunken intake where air just sort of has to flow along and maybe find its way downwards. Now if an aqueduct doesn't have this specific shape then well it isn't an aqueduct. It has to be symmetrical, it has to have this sort of general shape and it has to have a downward sloping angle it can't just drop off immediately now compared to a scoop a nacoduct will draw in a lot less air as you can imagine the scoop is literally in the airstream pulling or letting air being forced directly into it whereas a nacoduct has to kind of pull the air downwards a little but a scoop also has a lot more drag as you can imagine air that flows past this will want to fill in this sort of pocket behind it and that produces a lot of pressure drag. It also disrupts the air flowing past, so for example if I had a big rear wing here and I wanted the air to flow smoothly to it, maybe it'd be better having a nacoduct than a scoop. But if it was for, you know, an engine air intake or something like that, especially on a naturally aspirated engine, a nacoduct probably wouldn't provide enough airflow into the engine to be useful. Nacoducts are basically used for just Really, things that have low cooling requirements or low airflow requirements, such as brake cooling or something small cooling, sort of like air, oil cooling and whatever. That's a lot of cooling. Essentially, imagine a scoop as being all about air going inside and not thinking about drag, whereas Nacoduct is kind of the opposite. It's all about being low drag. Nacoducts must pretty much always be facing forwards as well. Um, well, not much, pretty much. They literally only work in one direction. That shaping they've got to them means that they can only work pointing forwards. It doesn't do the reverse if you put it backwards. There was a period in NASCAR where they were starting to put nacoducts on the rear windows backwards. Now, they're just acting as a hole to let air out of the cabin, which is useful in NASCAR because they have those net windows so air goes in and it needs to find a way out, otherwise you have a lot of drag there. So, they start doing that. The only reason I can think of them doing that is because they had molds for nacoducts available, and it was just a lot easier than, you know, having to custom mold something brand new. Uh, there's a link in the description to a video talking about the backwards nacoducts. Now, sizing-wise, I've heard the aspect ratio of 3 to 5 is ideal. So, 3 units wide for every 5 units long, essentially. So with this I can just scale it up or whatever and it's the same aspect ratio. If I don't think it's as important on cars. I know it mostly applies to aeroplane that aeroplanes that figure, which makes sense because as you approach the speed of sound, air kind of behaves not differently, but you have sort of different requirements, I suppose. So yeah, I don't think that's a definite rule, but sort of ideally if you can fit it in I guess that'd be slightly more accurate. I've also heard that a ramp angle of about 7 degrees, uh, I think 7 degrees was the number. So, I mean, not that you can really measure it in automation, but I mean, in real life examples, I suppose that would be the number you're aiming for. Anyway, hopefully that was a good explanation of Nacoduct. Uh, I'm happy to talk about anything that you may not have understood in the comments. Anyway, thank you for watching, remember to subscribe to Boost and Ethanol for more, leave a like, and until next video, goodbye.